No, we did not, no. And why not? Um, there always seemed to be some reason or another why she wouldn't either wouldn't discuss it or if we did discuss it it became an issue that would turn into a um, it would springboard into unpleasantness and then arguments um, and, and then it was also too late at a certain point it was just too late so then the idea of a post nup agreement was brought up to Miss Hurd, and that was in Australia. That was that was the beginning of uh, the Australian. Well, let's fight. let's talk let's talk about Australia then. Uh, but first of all, why were you in Australia? Uh, I was I was working on Pirates of the Caribbean five. And who from your team was with you in Australia? J uh, Jerry Judge, Malcolm Connolly, uh, Nathan Holmes, Stephen Duders, Keenan Wyatt. I believe that was it. Oh, uh, and, and yeah, yeah, no, that's it. Was Miss Lloyd in Australia with you as well? Oh, yes, yes, sorry, yes. Miss Lloyd, yes, Miss Lloyd traveled to Australia with us. And did Dr. Kipper come down to Australia at any point? Yeah, he, Dr. Kipper down, came down uh, a bit later. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Wyatt testified yesterday that he observed you have a meeting with Sean Bailey in, in Australia. Do you remember that? Yes. And could you please tell the jury who Sean Bailey is? Sean Bailey at that time was i believe he was the i believe he was the number three uh the number three man at disney in terms of hierarchy he was a uh, upper echelon disney so he was under bob Iger, um and initially under dick cook who was removed from disney um for some reason but so yes he, he's uh he was number three man at disney and why were you having a discussion with Mr. Bailey? Um, the discussions that I would, uh, was having with Mr. Bailey, with, with Sean Bailey, were, um, they had to do with, well, as, as I think we've established, you know, I have uh, always, from the beginning of those this that series of films I, w I I had always rewritten um, my my character's words and jokes if you will um, and situational comedy and things that I would add and uh, mr. Bailey was very complimentary about some of the things that I'd done he'd uh, you know, he, he'd come over to me laughing after Jackson a take. Calls for hearsay. Your Honor, this is just discussing generally what they were talking about. No, he, he was getting specific. I'll sustain that if you want to continue. That's fine. Mr. Depp, was Miss Hurd in Australia with you? She came a little later, yes. Do you recall when she came down? I don't recall. Oh, oh, oh well. No, I do recall it was March. It was March. And what happened when Miss Hurd came to visit you in Australia? Um, Ms. Hurd was upset because, uh, 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 as I stated earlier, as it was too late for a prenup agreement, there there was a discussion of post-nup agreement. And I had called 
my lawyer at the time and asked him if if he could have one of his uh, one of his lawyers sit down with Ms. Heard and and give her a, a basic rundown of what a postnuptial agreement uh, meant and and they sh I was told that they showed Objection, her hearsay. Your Honor, this is what a, 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 something he asked an attorney. It's not a, a statement of fact that's being offered for its truth. Yeah, I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Next question. What did Ms. Hurd tell you she was upset about when she arrived in Australia? Ms. Hurd told me that the attorney that she met with was um, rude and dismissive and all she was being shown was a uh, an example of a, a postnuptial agreement. Ms. Heard then stated to me that she was very upset. She stated to me that um, that she, she, what she had said was, she said to the lawyer, the woman, that this um, Johnny can't, he, he must not, he, he doesn't know about this. He, he's never seen, he doesn't know that this is what this is. He, no way he would agree to this. Um, and what Ms. Heard then expressed to me was that the lawyer, the woman, had laughed at her and said, oh, he knows. Yes, he knows everything. Um, which sent her into a, a tailspin. So by the time she arrived in Australia, that was uh, sunk very deep into her, her psyche. Um, I mean, so much so that what really, what really surprised me was that she kept saying, I'm not even in your will. I'm not even in your will. I thought that was an odd thing to say. Um, especially since I, I, I don't think anybody had had time to change wills or anything of that nature. Um, so th those things just didn't, it felt uh, wrong. And, and she could not let go of the fact that uh, I was in on this uh, post-nup agreement and that I was trying to trick her into uh, essentially getting nothing if, uh, if something were to happen. And how did you respond to Ms. Hurd? So I just told her those were not my intentions, uh, you know. And at a, a certain point, you don't know what to do. I mean, it's, it's it, the person is telling you, she's telling you, you don't trust me, you don't trust me, you don't trust me, and um, I, I can't speak about legal documents. I can't speak legalese. I can't explain to her these things. All I could do was try to calm her down and say that I was not out to screw her over or, or, or put her in a position that was, uh, was uncomfortable. Did that work? These were stock, normal things to do. It did not work, no. It escalated and escalated and it turned into uh, madness. Chaos. Can you please violence? Can you please describe that chaos and violence? Yes, she 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 was irate. She 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 was irate and she was possessed. Uh, and when I tried to remove myself as I normally would from a situation, and that is to say, you know, as she's hammering me 
with with uh, the sort of brutal brutal words and and uh, you know you know I, I don't pardon my language but I remember that uh, it wasn't nice sort of being called an ass kisser to lawyers or or uh, or uh, a pussy um, that didn't fight for her or stand up for her um, Um, I, again, try to remove myself from the situation, um, but to no avail, as I, I, I literally, the house that they had rented for me in Australia was quite a large place, it was, it was quite a bit of a labyrinth, you know, and a lot of rooms, a lot of extra rooms, so I would go to I'll, I'll just cut to the chase. I, I think that I ended up locking myself in about at, le at least nine bedrooms, bathrooms that day um, as she was banging on the doors and screaming obscenities and wanting to uh, have a physical altercation. So how did it come to be that your finger became injured? There was at one point where I'd, I'd stayed in one of the, you know, I'm sitting on a bathroom floor, door locked, she's banging away, banging away, screaming, blah, 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 and then suddenly she stopped and I could hear her walk away. I could hear her sort of receding into the distance, if you will, and I, I, I you know, Yes, I, so, 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 yes, it became very emotional because I, I, you can't win for losing. There was nothing I could do to, to un make her understand that I had, if that lawyer had in fact done that, and I did call my lawyer uh, at the time, Jake Bloom, and I had him get these people on the phone and I uh, I'm ashamed to say that I had taken at that point when, we were, when I was on the phone with him I had taken Miss Hurd's words to heart and um, and I laid out a ration of of um, very, uh, uh, I was very upset that she was pushed to that limit because I had believed it. Um, and uh, in fact, none of it had happened. So uh, it was all getting too crazy. And again, I had been sober for many, many months from alcohol and substances, aside from the marijuana. Um, and I got, I left the place, the, the room that I was hiding in, or not hiding, locked myself into. And I went downstairs in the house, there was been downstairs in the house, as soon as you walk in the house, you can go upstairs or downstairs. Downstairs there was a sort of a wreck rec area, pool table and such, and uh, and there was a uh, bar, and uh, I was uh, um, I was a mess. I was a wreck. I was shaking, and I just didn't understand why all this was happening. So I went behind the bar. I grabbed a bottle of vodka that was there and a shot glass and sat at the bar. She was nowhere around. And I poured myself 
two or three stiff shots of, uh, of the vodka, first taste of alcohol I'd had in a long time. And um, then she came down to the bar and found me there. And of course started screaming, oh, you're drinking again, yeah, the monster and all that. Um, so she reached, she, she, she walked up to me and reached and grabbed the, the bottle of vodka and then just uh, kind of stood back and then hurled it at me. And, and it, it, uh, it just went <laughs> right past my head and smashed behind me. Uh, so I stood up and I walked behind the bar and there was a larger bottle of vodka, the kind with the handle, you know, on it. I grabbed that and I went and I sat in my seat again. I opened the bottle and I poured myself a shot and drank it. Ms. Heard was flinging insults uh, left, right, and center, and she then grabbed that bottle and, uh, and threw that at me. Um, and the way that the, the way that the bar was sit situated and w w where Ms. Heard was, so if, 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 if I could show you, so if, There, she went there, and so I was leaning like this in the chair, looking at her. First bottle went, then got the other bottle shot. Takes the second bottle, which was the larger one. I'm in this position again, and my my hand is on the edge of the the bar, like like that. You know leaning over the fingers like that. And uh, she threw the large bottle and it made contact and shattered uh, everywhere. And I honestly didn't, I didn't feel the pain at first at all. I felt no pain whatsoever. What I felt was, um, I felt heat, I felt heat and I felt um, as if something were dripping down my hand, you know. Um, and then I looked down and realized that the, the, the tip of my finger had been severed and uh, I was looking directly at my bones sticking out and uh, the, the, the meaty portion of your, the inside of your finger. The, um, and it was, it, blood was just uh, pouring out. And at that point, I, 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 I think that I went into some sort of, I, I don't know what a nervous breakdown feels like, but that's probably the closest that I've ever been. I didn't, nothing made sense. And I knew in my mind and in my heart, this is, this is not life. This is not life. <laughs> no one should have to go through this. And, and as I said, this, this feeling of nervous, being in, a, in the middle of some sort of nervous breakdown, I started to write 
with my blood in my own blood on the on the walls um, little reminders from our past that essentially represented lies that she had told me and lies that I had caught her in um, and uh, and then I did the next thing, uh, you know, I, amongst all the madness, I, 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 I would again hide in the uh, bathroom or wherever, and I texted Dr. Kipper, and I said, you might want to come over. Uh, you know, I've cut my finger off here. Which finger was, was cut, Mr. Depp? Um, it's the, the middle. It's a funny-looking one. <laughs> It's the middle finger here. You can see the, well, you can see all the, the sort of, the, the, from the initial wound, this, this, all these bones up here were crushed, and it looked like a, it looked like Vesuvius, you know. And um, so this, 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 part of my finger now is, so that, because of not having use of the tip here, uh, this is um, basically uh, arthritis that kicks into the joint once that, once that uh, upper part of the finger is mangled. So is that the right middle finger? Right middle, yes. And is that your dominant hand? Uh, yes, it is, yes. Mr. Depp, after Ms. Hurd threw the vodka bottle at you and severed your finger, um, what, if anything, did she say when she saw the injury? I don't recall anything, but just, uh, it was almost like white noise, or just someone yelling, or just a, it was just a high-pitched, constant um, attack of, of insults of it was just jumbled words to me in, in a very high frequency and I I, I, I I was in a bit of shock you know I was in shock <laughs> you mentioned that you reached out to dr. Kipper did you receive medical attention after that yes um, uh, Jerry Judge, Malcolm Connolly, I believe Debbie Lloyd was there. Yes, Debbie Lloyd was there. Um, ben King had arrived as well. Who is Ben King? Uh, ben King uh, was, he, he's, he's essentially, he's a house, so, so sort of a, an estate manager, and he, I we worked together in London a, a few times, and uh, uh, he's a wonderful guy. So I brought brought uh, Ben along to Australia to to manage everything. He's very he's very very good, and very nice. Um, and then there was also uh, oh yeah, I mentioned Malcolm. And, and Jerry, yeah, they were there as well. Which, if any, of the medical professionals that you saw that day, did you tell what happened to your finger? I, when Malcolm and um, Dr. Kipper, when, when they took me to, first, first we went to Malcolm's uh, uh, apartment where he was staying while we were shooting the film. Uh, and tried to clean uh, my hand because I had worked the day before and uh, obviously when you're playing a pirate Captain Jack or whatever they you're you're covered you they paint with on with alcohol um, with rubbing alcohol they paint dirt all into your hands 
and then to your face and everything. So they were they were worried about getting my finger clean, so they tried doing that at Malcolm's, and then Chipper said, no, we got to get to emergency room, and we got to get hold of the tip of his finger. So we went to the emergency room. Um, the doctor asked me what happened, <clears throat> and uh, I lied to him. I said that I had uh, smashed it in, um, in, in these large accordion doors that it got caught in the accordion doors. Why uh, would you lie about that? I lied because I, I did not, I didn't feel, I, I didn't want to disclose that it was what it was. I, I didn't want to disclose that it had been, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to disclose that it had been misheard, that it had thrown the, thrown a vodka bottle at my, at me and then took my finger off. I didn't want to get her in trouble. I didn't want to, I, I tried to uh, just keep things as copacetic and as, as easy as possible for everyone. I, I, did, I did not want to put her name in that, in that mix. Did you tell Dr. Kipper what had actually happened to your finger? Yes. After you returned from the hospital, where did you go? I went to Malcolm Connolly's um, apartment uh, and uh, slept on his couch. And to the extent that you know, where was Ms. Heard during this time? Um, Ms. Heard uh, was I wasn't there, but I, I had a, it was clear that she had to, uh, she needed to leave. And uh, I'd asked them to get her on a flight from Melbourne or Sydney or wherever back to Los Angeles. Why did you ask for that? I, I didn't want to see her. I, I didn't. I didn't want to see her. I didn't want to have any more arguments. I was, uh, for all intents and purposes, I was just done. Mr. Depp, I'd like to show you a picture. If we could please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 145. <clears throat> What is this a picture of? That is, um, that's me in the emergency room. Um, I see, um, I see a detail that I forgot, I'd forgotten, which is the, the Missouri had pulled, the, taken my cigarette from the ashtray and uh, stomped it out in my face here. Do you, you mark you, on the screen where you see that? Um, it's right above that green dot. And do you know who took that, this picture? I do not know. Uh, can we please publish this to the jury? Do you want to enter into evidence? Yes, please. Any objection? Oh, yeah. All right. 145 in evidence, you can publish to the jury. And so, Mr. Depp, now that the jury can see the photograph, can you again explain um, what that green dot is identifying? Um, just above the, above, 
just above the green the green dot is a a, a, a wound uh, from uh, Ms. Hurd taking my cigarette and and um, at, this is after the finger had gone away um, and she stubbed it out in my in, in, in my face in, on, on my cheek so uh, that's the um, result of that if we could please take this um, down and I'd like to show you mr. Depp um, plaintiff's exhibit 144 Um, what is this a picture of Mr. Depp the remains of my finger and was this taken shortly after you were injured I, I, I believe this was taken at the uh, at the emergency room I'd imagine um, I'd move to add this into evidence but I'd like to also warn the jury and the people in the Sorry. Audience thought this is a very graphic picture. All right. Any objection? No, Your Honor. All right. One forty-four. You can take this down. Thank you. Mr. Depp, how long after your finger was injured did you return to L.A.? Um. After the emergency room, um, the following day, uh, I was sent to a, they found a, a, a surgeon uh, in, uh, in Australia um, so that I could go, they wanted me to take have x-rays taken and, and uh, all that. Uh, so we went to that doctor, the finger surgeon, um, and uh, he asked me what happened to my finger, and I again lied, and I stuck to the story that uh, it was smashed in an accordion, a large accordion door. And he looked at me as if I were uh, lying. And the next thing I heard was, sir, that is a wound of velocity. And, um, Your Honor, this is a communication in the context of medical treatment. I'll sustain the objection. Moving on. Um, so, so, Mr. Depp, th this was a surgeon you saw in Australia? Yes. Um, when did you return to Los Angeles after seeing that surgeon? I, b I believe it was probably the next day um, where it might have been Kipper, or someone who, who had hooked me up with a, a, a wonderful, sir, a great, uh, expert in um, reconstruction of uh, you know hand the uh, hands fingers digits whatever uh, so I went to see the surgeon and um, we prepped for surgery uh, on, you know pretty quickly and what type of surgery did you have on your finger um, the, the majority of th this was all uh, missing um, and essentially to some degree hollowed out, if you will, because the bone had shattered 
And um, then there was the bone that was sticking out down there. Um, so he had to take, take, uh, do a skin graft from, from this part of my hand uh, and graft it um, onto my finger uh, to, 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 uh, to give me a finger again. Anything else that was done to your finger to stabilize it? Um, I, I don't think it was initially that they put the pin in. I think the pin feels like the pin came later. I can't, I, I'm not sure, but um, you just, uh, I had to go after the surgery. Um, it was bandaged up and they, you know, they give you all kinds of things on what to do, what not to do, keep it elevated or this or that. And uh, I just uh, walked away with a very large uh, middle finger. <laughs> it was all wrapped up to like this and then, you know, uh, Medicaid, they've given me shots in there and such. How long did you wear that bandage that you just described? Well, the, ba the bandage was f from the time of the surgery all the way through the remainder of finishing parts of the Caribbean, which was, uh, I think I finished, it, 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 the injury took place in March, finished parts of the Caribbean five, I believe in, August, beginning of August, end of July. So there was a bandage on it the whole time. What I had to do was um, wear, b b because of, um, there's a special effects um, a trick that they had planned, basically, with whatever bandage I had on, as long as they could, they would put more, uh, little green dots, for example, on the, on the splint and the finger and all that, and the bandages, so that in post-production they could use what's called uh, com computer-generated imagery, CGI, to, to erase the bandage uh, and put a, replace it with a normal finger. Um, that's how we finished the film. If we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 61. <clears throat> and if we could scroll to the second picture, or third. Can you keep going? One more, please. Uh, another. Sorry, this is a series of pictures. And to spare everyone, I don't think I'll show you the, um, the immediate injury again. This is right one right here. Thank you. Um, Mr. Dupp, do you recognize this picture? Yes, I do. And what's reflected in this picture? Uh, this was taken in the uh, surgeon's office. Um, where I'd go in, the case, well, I had to go in every couple of few days to have it checked out um, for infections and such. Uh, and this, this so the, the, the finger, finger and non-finger, <laughs> was uh, wrapped quite heavily and there was this medicated uh, kind of greasy medicated thing on, on top of the wound itself. Um, and this, I believe, s s seems like when the pin was in here uh, and the, 
the wrapping is, uh, the bandage is, uh, well, I had my choice, you know, and uh, I thought, well, may as well take the kitty bandages, you know, dinosaurs and hearts and unicorns. <laughs> Uh, As I said, you know, at uh, least at least to have some humor uh, to deflect the pain. Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to move um, Plaintiff's Exhibit 61 into evidence. Do you want the whole exhibit or just this picture? Um, if we could publish uh, the whole exhibit. You want the whole picture, the yeah. whole exhibit. Any, any objection to 61? No, Your Honor. All right, 61. But you just want to publish this part of 61. Yes. Okay, thanks. So how long after the, your injury was this picture taken? After the initial injury? Yes. I'd say no, no, no more than, it would seem to me, no more than five days a week. Okay. And how long was, was this bandage on your hand for? Uh, well, I was wearing bandages all the way up until I finished the film and then Um, yeah, through, through, up through August for sure, and then beyond, I, I had to keep it, uh, I had to keep it covered, I had to keep it protected. Do you recall how long after the injury that the, or excuse me, how long after the surgery the pins were removed from your finger? I would say... Maybe, I think it was about two or three days because I remember that there was maybe more, but I just remember that the pain seemed to be getting worse and worse as Debbie would rate it, you know, from a, is this an eight out of 10? Is this a three out of 10? That kind of thing. Um, at a certain point, it, 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 it became, uh, kind of a 12 out of 10 because it, it felt it felt hot very 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 hot and it felt uh, there was there it was there was throbbing it was like a th it was throbbing and the pin in there uh, it was like I could feel the pin in there so I, I, I we'd called the surgeon I called the surgeon told him, actually, I think it might have been Debbie Lloyd, actually, called, but, but uh, I knew I had to see the surgeon again because something felt very wrong, and I went there, and he removed all the bandages, and he found that, um, that my finger was indeed infected uh, and that I had uh, contracted uh, MRSA, uh, MRSA, um, which is like a, I believe it's like the flesh-eating disease or something. But it, it was a pretty, uh, it was a pretty grotesque sight. Um, after that, what the, with the pin in and what they had to do to save it. Mr. Depp, um, while your finger was injured and in healing, did you ever take any opiates during that time? No, ma'am. No, no, no. No more. Um, Your Honor, I was, I'm about to switch gears, so if right. it makes you sense to take our lunch break. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our, our lunch break.